Yo, welcome to another episode of Soul Food Sundays. I hope you guys are doing well. I am just getting back from the gym. Got it in right quick. And um, now I am ready to bring forth a message for you all for this week. I hope that you guys are doing okay. It has been a crazy week. Uh, if you follow me on IG, you know that I have really been tripping off of uh, the events that took place this week in D.C. And uh, without going uh, too much into it, I just <laughs> want to say, folks crazy as hell, yo. <laughs> I am convinced that racism is a mental illness. And uh, it has been passed on for generations and generations and generations. And we are really seeing just how uh, prevalent it is in our now moment in this current era that we are living in and that we definitely need to pay attention and govern ourselves accordingly and if at any point you can get a good laugh at the shit by all means chuckle it up because <laughs> these folks are bananas so uh, speaking of illness um, the cards that I have been drawn to to pull from today are the Mystical Healing Reading Cards, which is a deck that I have used once or twice. It's one of my newer decks, but I'm not entirely familiar with, so this should be interesting. And um, without further ado, we're going to get to it. You know how we do it, Turquoise Majesty. We don't go asking God for a message and not thanking God for the messages that have already been revealed and all that God has already done. So with that being said, Father God, Mother Earth, ancestors and spirit guides, we just thank you, thank you, thank you for showing up and showing out on our behalf. We thank you for your protection and direction as we have ended a week and are going into a new week. We pray that you continue to cover us in your love and your grace. We ask that you bring forth the best message for the highest good of all of those under the sound of my voice. Um, as a collective, what message do you have for us at this time, Spirit? We just thank you for all that you are, all that you've done, and all that you are going to do. Amen. So check me out. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm real tired. But I did not want to <clears throat> miss this opportunity to connect with you guys and to bring forth a message. So here we go. message do you have for the collective as we enter this new week what message do you have for the collective oh I just feel like a whole bunch of cards want to come out Love your body. I did just finish loving on my body. I, I always look at working out as a way to connect with my temple and to show my body love by uh, stretching it and by um, challenging it and by just showing it some concerted attention. You know what I'm saying? Like focusing on shaping toning building up my body okay so we have love your body at the bottom of the deck we had break addiction and the top stop breaking agreements oh somebody lying out here in these streets okay let's see we're gonna start with the message from love your body and what this message collectively may be saying to us is that many of us have made resolutions as for how we are going to um, move forward in this year. You know we good for a New Year's resolution, honey. So many of us have made resolutions saying we're going to do this and do that as it relates to our health and our bad habits. And we are in the 10th day of the year. 
and we're wavering. So this message is telling us to love on our bodies, to break any addictions that may be um, may be detrimental to our bodies, and to stop breaking agreements. So when you verbally, mentally, emotionally, whatever, say, declare that you are going to make a change, you're making an agreement. And when you don't make that change, when your actions aren't in alignment with the agreement that you've made, you've broken that agreement. So I'm pretty sure this message is also speaking to some other ways that we need to break addictions and uh, stop breaking agreements. But I'm already seeing what's jumping out to me intuitively that is that it is referring uh, specifically to the way we uh, have addictions and make agreements as it relates to our health and don't keep them. So let's see what the book says about love your body. I've been doing pretty good, I will say, the last few days. I definitely have wavered in um, my eating habits and what I said I was going to do this year in terms of uh, being in alignment and making sure that my vessel is being fed in a more holistic manner. Um, but I ain't had no meat in like three or four days, so that's a win. You definitely have to appreciate those those small wins that have for me. If you know me and you know how I love chicken, that's a big win. So it says, love your body. Create a new perception of your body. How do you feel about your body? Do you constantly critique it or do you listen to it and lovingly nourish and cherish it? Any consciously or unconsciously harbored feelings of self-repulsion, rejection, frustration, anger, and guilt will start to weaken various parts of your body. You're being asked to tune in and work on creating a healthy inner environment. What if you could see your physical body as the most incredible, divine, perfect, perfectly designed part of you, a place that houses your soul? From that perspective, what food, drink, thoughts, feelings, even relationships would you entertain? When you let go of the painful, traumatic experiences that have caused you to feel unsafe, start to create healthy boundaries and begin to understand more about your divine nature. Your body will become stronger, healthier, and more beautiful. So these cards have action items as well, and it advises that you look at your body, ask, what am I holding on to in terms of concepts, feelings, programs, and experiences which no longer serve me? What do I do that sabotages my health? Explore thoughts that you think, feelings that come from those thoughts, and actions that come from those feelings. Take a pen and paper and write down some loving thoughts you can start to project to your body. Every time a negative thought or feeling arises, acknowledge it and then replace it with a positive one. Linger on the positive for as long as possible. Um, what this is immediately bringing to my mind is how I have vowed to start the Sacred Woman Journey, um, which is um, a book by Queen of Four. She's a holistic um, leader and she specializes in womb health. Um, she also has some uh, information out there for men in terms of um, optimizing their full health as well. And she uses a lot of ancient ways that we can use natural foods and natural practices, meditations, prayers, uh, movements, and things of that to cleanse our bodies and cleanse our wombs as a woman we store our energy in our wombs we create from our wombs uh not just children but also our ideas so it is important that we cleanse our womb we we have sexual trauma um within our wombs and so it's important that we cleanse ourselves so that we can show up in the world um more of ourselves and not tainted by those traumatic things that we've experienced uh the trauma that we have ingested by eating meat which is just uh digesting uh another living things energy and trauma um it's just a lot to think about as it relates to that and um i know i agree to that journey and so what i'm finding is that the book is not a step-by-step -step process for um 
obtaining womb, womb health, but it just has a bunch of rituals and, and just uh, recipes and prayers and things like that that you can do. It looks like, and I'm on the fourth chapter, you can kind of tailor your own step-by-step -step process for it. And so I'm having to try to figure out how to navigate that whole thing. So I'm reading from the book every day, but I don't know that I'm going to be able to actually really get into it until I finish the book. Um, and so while I haven't broken the agreement, I've created the altar as the book has uh, specified, but I haven't gotten to the altar and I have not been uh, using the recipes in the book. I just kind of been doing it my own way. So for me, maybe this is just telling me to um, stick to the plan. There's <laughs> nothing wrong with improvising, but to make sure that I get on board and stay on board with the agreement that I made to break some of the addictions that I have. And it's so crazy because this image of breaking the addiction has this, uh, I'm going to drop the card, bird coming from a, a being hatched from a, a, a egg and when I tell you chicken is an addiction for me but nigga I'm four days clean out here yeah. so like I said I'm going to celebrate my smile win but I'm also going to take heed to what this message is telling me so yeah for those of you out there who are seeking to um, be able to be a clearer conduit of um, spiritual energy you definitely want to make sure that you are loving on your body that you're keep keeping your body as clean as possible inside and out not only focusing on your physical health but also your energetic health make sure you're taking your salt baths um, especially as you are encountering individuals on a daily basis and absorbing um, and exchanging energy with them you want to make sure that you are prioritizing your energetic health as well as your physical health what you are putting in your body um so we will look at 31 which is stop breaking agreements allow others to develop trust in you how often do you say you're going to do something to a colleague a friend a family member or yourself and then do nothing it could be as simple as saying that you're going to meet someone at 2 p.m. and showing up late without calling, texting, or taking responsibility. Every agreement you break attach, attaches like an energetic link to all the other agreements you've broken in your life and all the other people who also don't care about breaking agreements. This massive chain weighs you down and sucks the life force out of you whilst hooking you into the vibration of failure. Keeping your agreements helps others to trust you and feel safe around you and offers you new opportunities. It's also a sign of great respect for yourself and others. Successful people don't break agreements. And if they do, they recognize this straight away, take responsibility, and make amends for the broken agreement by doing something extra. Think of the earliest agreement you have ever broken. Now, in your mind's eye, take responsibility for it. Don't feel bad, just acknowledge it and then make your way back through your life and remember as many other broken agreements as you can whilst taking responsibility for them all. This simple but mega powerful process will enable you to become a more dynamic human being. Make a decision to always try to keep your agreements or if need be, acknowledge if you have broken them and then do something to make up for it. This is so important because when you break agreements, you are creating karma. For yourself you're also creating uh, a reputation for yourself so not only in the spiritual realm but also uh, in the physical realm with other people you, you don't want to become that person who makes agreements and does not uh, follow them because that will be attached to your name and your character and your reputation forever it's so easy to um, paint this picture of yourself as someone who's not reliable and it's hard to fix that. It's hard to change that to becoming someone who uh, is known for being reliable. I, for one, really value having people in my life who um, know the importance of timeliness, the importance of showing up when they say they're going to show up and how they're going to show up. And while I do cherish that, I understand that things happen and they don't always go um, as planned. 
but you know when someone has made a concerted effort to uphold an agreement and when they just don't give a damn um so like those people who say they're gonna pay you back and you know they not <laughs> or those people who say they're gonna show up and you know they're not and people that say they're gonna call you back and you know they're not like it, there's a difference between that and then those people who are on the up and up for the most part and then something happens where they can't uphold the agreement that they they said they would so even if it's on the surface level or if it's something serious where you told someone you're going to commit to something in some way or even to yourself like we were talking about if you told yourself you committed to yourself that you were going to do some things in some way and you broke that agreement you just want to be mindful of the karma that you are creating um not only in the physical but the spiritual realm so the next message was uh break addiction that's something that i am always mindful of because i know what addictions are in my ancestral line and i know that i don't want to create new ones so i'm always trying to be mindful of addictions although i would not sit here and lie to y'all like i don't have any um because for, for me, for one, emotional eating is definitely one that I am actively trying to conquer. So it says, let go of your addictions. All habits are an attempt to suppress uneasy, undesired feelings by using outside means to alter one's mood. On the deepest levels, your negative habits are trying to, to direct you towards a search for the spirit. A negative habit first occurs in the astral body when your I am or the part of you that has the strength to guide the body weakens. The longer you entertain the negative habit, the stronger it becomes. It then enters your etheric body where it becomes an addiction. Man, when I tell you my sinuses don't drain like this until I start channeling these messages. Whatever your addiction is, whether it is to gambling, food, alcohol, success, coffee, drugs, worry, drama, criticism, seeing something wrong with your body, spending more money than you have, stressing or focusing on lack and etc. It's time to go within and gain back your autonomy. Recognize that you are stronger than this addiction and have the power to overcome it. You can rebuild your inner strength and self-belief. Pick one thing that you are addicted to. Set a small, easily achievable goal. Instead of having three cups of coffee, cut your consumption down to two. This is crucial. Every time you hit a target, you build confidence. Your next target will naturally be a little higher. Don't set the bar too high, though, ever. Ask, what is my addition masking? When you detect the feeling or mood that you have been avoiding, meet it. Give it form. Be soft with this emerging part of yourself. Imagine giving this feeling, shame or fear, a hug. Also, start learning and exploring your spiritual nature. When you truly know who you are and all the higher beings that work within you, addiction dissolves. This card is asking us to get to the bottom of our addiction. So first you need to acknowledge that you have them. And then you need to identify what they are. And then once you identify uh, what your addictions are, which there are so many different kinds as specified in this um, description, um, you want to take time out to explore where it came from. And, and go as deep as you possibly can so that you can pull that up from the root and um, put yourself in a better position to break that addiction as the card is calling for and to just show up in a new way, to be self-reliant. It's like that song by uh, Solange. I tried to smoke it away. Um, I'm trying to think of the name of that song. I try to put one in the air. I try to set in the states. And so, and so, and so, and so. I try to make myself busy. I'm trying to get to the hook. I ran it away, 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 away. Oh, cranes in the sky. If you have not heard that song, take a listen to it because that is what Solange is talking about. All these different ways that we try to mask what it is deep down inside of us that is bothering us. Um, and, has, and they become addictions, but we come to find that they don't work. 
They just are things that cover up and help us cope with instead of heal um, what it is that is lying dormant in us, waiting to come up and be freed. And so we are being called to do that work. Um, it is not easy, but it is absolutely worth it. I am in the midst of doing um, some of that work of um, digging up some of the things that have led to me developing a habit or a bad addiction of emotional eating. Um, and so I am sure that as you all are on your journey, you, as you take time out to reflect um, on who you are and how you are, that some things will come up for you that you are able to own about yourself in terms of agreements that have been broken or bad uh, or breaking addictions. And I hope that you're able to uh, have the courage and strength um, to allow those things to come up for you, to move through the process of healing them. Um, and if you don't feel like you have the strength to do so, call on your team, call on your ancestors, call on the spirit guys, call on the people around you whom you can be uh, vulnerable with about what it is that you're going through um, in order to see victory in that situation. So I hope that this message has found you all well. I hope that um, this is an awesome week for you guys going forward. And with that being said, peace.